Hey, it's Mike here, and today, does a vegan diet not reverse heart disease after all? Are Dr. Esselstyn's heart disease trials just completely meaningless? We're gonna investigate, and I will say, I've been getting this for a while from the other side of the aisle, people trying to make a vegan diet look bad, but recently, I've gotten little discussions with some of the plant-based and vegan people who don't think that it's good enough evidence. In other words, that we're not yet ready based off the data to say that a vegan diet reverses heart disease. So this forced me to examine my claims in further detail in this area. And so I went and did some statistical analysis and some statistics software and the results are very interesting. And I'm gonna try and make those statistics results as digestible as possible, but the big question here is, do the results found in the Esselstyn study meaningfully vary from what we would expect with people who have heart disease and cardiovascular disease in general? All right, so hopefully you're ready to nerd out. I decided to just make a video that I was purely interested in making that a lot of people are probably not gonna find super interesting because I may or may not be slightly shadow banned anyway. Posting about my Egypt video, it was clear that a lot of people are not seeing the notifications that they should for my videos, so whatever. I'll come out with a more widely interesting video soon. So to people who are trying to shoot down Esselstyn's study saying, you know, the data isn't good enough, and I agree that it would be awesome if we had $10 million to repeat a study with full massive 200 person control groups, but I have to say this, Given that heart disease is our number one killer, cardiovascular disease includes stroke too, so we're talking about even more with cardiovascular disease. If we possibly have a tool that can reverse it based off the knowledge that we have now, shouldn't we be implementing that instead of waiting for more data if the data we have is good enough? So we owe it to humanity to not flounder on this topic and figure out if it works and if it does work to keep promoting it as I am. <laughs> so have I been wrong all this time saying that a vegan diet can reverse heart disease? disease. Was this paper in the cardiac failure review stating that a low-fat plant-based diet remains the only dietary pattern objectively proven to reverse heart disease wrong? They cited Esselstyn. Okay, first things first, we need to do a really quick review of Dr. Esselstyn's study. Again, it was 198 people with cardiovascular disease, so have had heart attacks and strokes or just diagnosed cardiovascular disease from imaging, and they put those people on a whole food vegan diet, or at least tried, because 21 of those people dropped out of the study, and this is where the fair criticism happens because sometimes people look at that as a control group. It's an interesting comparison, but obviously it's not a control group. People were not randomized into two equal groups and then compared. This was just the dropouts. But a somewhat recent criticism I heard of Esselstyn was that these were not just people who failed the diet. They were the people who had bad health outcomes and then were dishonestly removed later, which I think is just kind of outrageous. First of all, not all of those quitters had bad results. At least seven of them were absolutely fine as far as the metrics of the study were concerned. So why would he throw them out? Secondly, it's very standard for dietary studies to then not include people who went out of the intervention, did not actually do the diet that they were supposed to, to be excluded from the final results. Imagine a drug trial where a bunch of people are like, I don't like swallowing pills, I'm not gonna take the drug. Like 20% of people are like that, and then they decide to just include them in the results of whether the drug worked or not. That would just be insane. But I'm gonna entertain this idea anyway, and we're gonna run two statistical scenarios, one in which we're just looking at Esselstyn's 177 remaining vegan dieter people, and then all of the people lumped together, even the people that fell off the wagon. And the results, again, will be interesting. And another important point is that we have 12 years of data on everybody, so it's essentially a 12-year study as far as the data is concerned. And the results were astounding. We only had one stroke in the intervention group and no heart attacks. In addition to a lot of incredible imaging, including these PET scans showing after three weeks, a pretty massive improvement in blood flow as well as those famous angiograms. And stay tuned, we're gonna have some extra angiograms that you've never seen here at the end. And we're also gonna talk about another accusation that no, these arteries aren't actually unclogging, they're just dilating, or perhaps there was an artery spasm. These are things that I've been told. All right, next up, to answer the question, were the results found from Esselstyn's intervention outstanding in any meaningful way, we are going to use the free open source statistics software, PSPP. PSPP is capable of running the statistical analyses that we see in most of the studies that I cite, and I'm going to make the PSPP files available in a link below so people can check 
the sheets and check everything if they want. So what we're gonna do in PSPP is take some of the most important cardiovascular markers. We're gonna look at cardiovascular disease death and major cardiovascular event rate. And we're going to essentially build a virtual control group based off of the best comparison data that we have. And that will come from this British Medical Journal study of 25,000 people. This is also a Western population, and this was done in roughly the same time era, so the medical system should be comparable. And yeah, I know it's not a perfect control group, obviously it's not, which is why I'm actually stacking the deck a little bit against Esselstyn, for example. This is looking at 10-year rates of cardiovascular disease death and events, and we are looking at 12 years for Dr. Esselstyn, so there's more time for bad things to happen in Esselstyn's study. Also, it's not huge, but Esselstyn's group was slightly older on average as well. Again, not a perfect control group by any means, but I believe that it is very much adequate to answer the question, do the results in this study vary from what we would expect? And this BMJ study is what we would expect. And for the results of the BMJ study, their 10-year cardiovascular disease mortality rate was 3.9%. That's not all causes, that's specifically cardiovascular disease. And their 10-year major your adverse event rate was 21%. And from Esselstyn's study, we're looking at zero deaths from cardiovascular disease and one stroke. Is that meaningfully different? We'll see. Another interesting point, the total death rate from all causes in Esselstyn's study was 2.8% over 12 years, and that's 25% lower than just the cardiovascular disease mortality from the BMJ study. Worth mentioning, but we're not gonna look at that. Okay, so the next step was to take the Esselstyn data, make a spreadsheet of it, 177 entries with those mortality and adverse events data points. Then making that virtual control group, again, 177 people, but this time we're looking at that 21% rate of adverse events, and then also that 3.9% death rate. And the BMJ study is looking at major adverse events. We're talking heart attack and stroke and heart failure. And for 177 of them, we're looking at 37 people. Okay, so bear with me for what is either gonna be the most interesting part of the video for you or the least interesting part of the video, because we're gonna do the statistics hopping back into PSPP. We're gonna be comparing the average rate of different values across two groups. To do that, we wanna do what is called a t-test. Again, the two metrics that I've typed in are one, cardiovascular disease mortality rate, and two, major adverse cardiovascular events. And the results are, drum roll please, incredibly statistically significant. This is a bit complicated because of what are called variances. And because of the variances, we are supposed to read the second line, and that is P equals 0 0.008, which is actually divided by two because it is a one-tailed or one-direction question of did the intervention group have a lower level, not was it different, which is two-tailed or two-direction. I know it's kind of confusing. But the point is, because it's a one-tailed question, we actually divide that by two, so it's P equals 0 0.004. If the p-value is under 0 0.05, then we consider it statistically significant. So this is very highly statistically significant. And the adverse events result is even more insane at 0 0.000, technically divided by two. It's, it's very, very statistically significant. And remember I said I was gonna run two scenarios, another one where I unfairly add the quitters back, and then we have two 198-person groups. We have all of the people in the Esselstyn study, whether they quit or not, and then a virtual control group of 198 people. And the results are still statistically significant. Remember it's two-tailed, so P equals 0 0.03 for the mortality and still at P equals 0 0.000 for the major adverse events. Let's take a break from statistics and just go to a little bit more of the artery mechanics. I have heard the claim that we're not actually seeing the reversal of artery clogging in these images or any of these results. We're actually just seeing an increased ability of the artery to die and let more blood flow through. You know, whether this really matters or not is up for debate because if at the end of the day, people are getting the blood flow that they need, then their disease is being reversed. But still, I am of the belief that there is some type of shrinking of these plaques, especially if they're soft plaques, who knows for deeply calcified plaques. And I think there's some just logical evidence for why this could be the case. First of all, 
Even though they're not the same by any means, a arterial lesion is somewhat similar to a zit and our body can clear those. So perhaps it can clear certain degrees of lesions of the artery. And another concept has to do with just the simple mechanics of that artery, just the mechanics of a tube in general and just how mass doesn't disappear based on the laws of physics. A lot of people don't know that I have a background in 3D design and product design and even rubber part design and stuff like that. And so I did a quick 3D mock-up of a artery lesion and you can see it has a volume to it. It has a lump there. It takes up space so that even if you can expand that artery in space, you're never gonna see a perfectly smooth wall like we see on the after angiograms of some of these patients. In other words, if the lesion is still there, even with dilation, you should see some type of deformation of that artery wall. Yet, as you can see here, we don't see one. And I know people are getting bored of these images, so it's worth mentioning that Dr. Baxter Montgomery has also um, captured some of these images. Here's one before and after months on a plant-based diet, significantly better. And here's a new one from Dr. Esselstyn in 2020 that I saw in one of his presentations. I really hope it's okay that I'm sharing this. If not, I think people need to see it. I mean, look at that, that's before and after about three years. Incredible. So in conclusion, even after giving Esselstyn's data set a few handicaps, for example, those two years extra for bad things to happen, the slightly different age rate, and so on, it's very clear that those are extraordinary results that he got. His results are also so outstanding that there's no other explanation for these results than the diet is what did it. Because looking to the other population of similar aged people who have a roughly equivalent medical system, having just dramatically higher levels of everything bad. Now it's not that maybe one group was walking a little bit extra or had a little bit more money. No, this is pretty extreme. So, well, yeah, I know this was not a real study. It still uses the statistics that are used in real studies to demonstrate at the very least that these are highly abnormal results, that the really only way possible that such strange results could happen is if these people are reversing their heart disease, even stopping it in their tracks, we would expect to see way higher rates of death and everything. Furthermore, when you just consider the basic mechanics of what is happening to these arteries. There's reversal going on. I, I honestly have not been convinced that there's not. Anyway, thanks for nerding out with me for a few minutes. Let me know what you think down below about all of this and feel free to like and subscribe and all that good stuff. And I'll see you in the next video.